Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where I keep you up to date with everything going on in the gaming world. And it's Monday, so I hope you had a good weekend. There's a big Capcom leak floating around right now to talk about by a pretty legitimate source, which includes both Resident Evil as well as Dino Crisis, so we're going to talk about that and what to expect from Capcom over the next year. Also, do you remember that first-person shooter by the name of Project A that Riot Games, the League of Legends developer, was teasing a few months back? Well, they showed it off this weekend, and this may be the next big competitive shooter to hit the market. That's not all though, because there is plenty more to discuss, including a lot of Platinum Games news and why Wonderful 101 will not be coming to Xbox One. Team Ninja adds a controversial feature to Dead or Alive 6 and more, so stay tuned for that. Before we get into some of the bigger stuff though, I want to highlight a few more game releases and updates. Kojima Studios has indeed announced an official release date for the PC version of Death Stranding for June 2nd, 2020. This will be both available on Steam as well as the Epic Game Store, which is actually kind of surprising. The reason I say that is because so far Sony's owned games has only used the Epic Game Store, but it does seem like they're branching out here, though it is being published by 505 Games and not Sony themselves. Now, the PC version will get some bonus content, including a new photo mode and some exclusive Half-Life content. Yes, Hideo Kojima did partner up with Valve to get some Half-Life content in Death Stranding, though I do have some questions about that. So far, we don't know exactly what this content entails. We see the head crabs as basically a hat at the end of the trailer, or at least that's what I assume it is, but we haven't seen anything else beyond that. I also wonder if this will be exclusive to the Steam version, which would entice players to buy it on Steam over the Epic Game Store. Hopefully we hear more about that soon, but either way, I'm really excited to see Death Stranding finally come over to the PC this June. Now for you Xbox players out there, I've seen a lot of fans really enjoying Yakuza 0 on Xbox over the last week, whether that be purchased or on Xbox Game Pass. And I think the game looks phenomenal on Xbox, especially if you have an Xbox One X. Well, one reason that may be is because it has been revealed to be running at 1440p and 60 frames per second. This would actually be the best console version surpassing the PlayStation 4 Pro, which is 1080p and 60 frames per second. So it looks like Sega really put a lot of effort into putting this on Xbox, which is a great sign going forward as more Yakuza games come over to the Xbox. We haven't gotten a release date for Yakuza Kiwami 1 and 2 just yet, but once those do release, I'm really hoping Sega continues to port more of this franchise over to Xbox. Sega and Xbox certainly has had a really good relationship as of lately with games like Yakuza and the upcoming Fantasy Star Online 2. Regardless, I would highly recommend Yakuza 0 to any Xbox fan out there. Now one last small update is on Diablo 4 as it has been revealed that it will indeed have controller support on PC and that you can rebind any skill to whatever button you choose. That's really very good news for fans who don't like using a keyboard and mouse setup and honestly, this is a very welcome addition because these point and click isometric games often don't have these options when they first launch. I know Blizzard has been taking a lot of crap here recently, but hopefully they can turn things around and ship a really high quality Diablo 4. And we also got to think about it this way, they are already announcing controller support, so can we expect Diablo 4 to be on, you know, Xbox Series X as well as the PlayStation 5? I think so, but you know, we'll have to wait for an official announcement for that. Okay, so with some of the smaller stuff out of the way, let's move on to the bigger stuff. And first up, we have some big leaks to talk about involving Capcom. So this is actually coming from an insider by the name of Dust Gollum, which does have a pretty good track record on Capcom related leaks. So this is by a pretty legitimate source. With that said, as with all leaks, do take this with a grain of salt as this is unconfirmed for the time being. So Dust Gollum has been pretty active on Twitter recently and after several leaks in the last few months, he seems to have opened up yet again on some of Capcom's future plans on the Resident Evil franchise as well as Dino Crisis. 
If you know me, I've been wanting a new Dino Crisis for a really long time now, so this next bit of news is going to sting a bit, unfortunately. But according to Dusk Golem, Dino Crisis was in development a few years ago, but was unfortunately cancelled. From the sounds of things, Dino Crisis is not in active development either, so don't expect any kind of Dino Crisis related news for quite a while. Honestly, I had high hopes for a Dino Crisis announcement myself this year, but I will reiterate what I've said several times in the past. I think an, an eventual Dino Crisis remake or reboot is inevitable at some point or another, especially with Capcom having so much success with the Resident Evil remakes over the last few years. I personally think that a Dino Crisis remake would look phenomenal in the Resident Evil 2 remake engine, and we do know that Capcom wants to bring back several dormant franchises. Now that's coming straight from Capcom themselves, so we do know that is a fact. So even though this leak isn't what I want to hear, I still have high hopes that we will eventually see Dino Crisis return, and hey, they apparently did work on a new Dino Crisis game, so they're at least thinking about it. What do you think though? Do you think it'll ever happen, or am I just dreaming? Let me know in the comments below. Now, Dusk Golem also revealed that Resident Evil Code Veronica is not in development either, which may surprise a few people. I've seen a lot of speculation believe that Code Veronica would be remade considering it's after Resident Evil 3, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. With that said, Dusk Golem remains adamant that the next year will be crazy for Resident Evil fans. He hasn't revealed to the exact reason as to why, but did say that Capcom will be releasing four big titles over the next fiscal year, two of which will be Resident Evil. Now this actually sounds similar to what he said a month or so ago, and while we can rule out a Code Veronica remake, it is very possible that they may be developing Resident Evil 4. I'm not sure if that will be the case considering Resident Evil 4 still looks good and it does have an HD remaster, but that isn't quite the same as a remake which would look substantially better. Personally, I would be okay with the remake definitely considering to many fans Resident Evil 4 is the best in the franchise, so why not, let's just go ahead and bring it back. As for the other Resident Evil game that he's talking about here, it will probably be that Resident Evil spinoff that is supposedly going to be in a medieval castle, it may have some werewolf enemies, and will be named something clever. I mean, we heard about this, I believe this was last month. If I were to predict a name, I'm thinking it'll be called something like Resident Medieval, but that is only a guess. Now we actually talked about this game in a separate video which was leaked by Dusk Golem, I believe it was a month or so ago, so I definitely think that this will be one of the two Resident Evil games. I'm not expecting Resident Evil 8 anytime soon based off what he has said in the past, but we will have to wait and see. I don't know what these other two big Capcom games will be though, but I would love to hear some predictions in the comments below. Could it be more dormant IP like something like, I don't know, Breath of Fire? You have Onimushu? Maybe they could go back to Devil May Cry again, or they could do like a spinoff to Monster Hunter. There is one though that I would really like to see, and that would be Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma is definitely one of the more underappreciated RPGs, and it has had several re-releases, and it's for that very reason. It's a good game even if it's not a huge seller. I think over the years though, it has brought in a lot more fans than its original release though, so with the right budget behind it, I could see it doing well on current platforms or next generation consoles. So could we see a Dragon's Dogma 2? I certainly hope so, but we'll have to wait and see. Moving on though, Platinum Games has had a lot to talk about in the last month and they don't seem to be slowing down at all. In an interview with Gamatsu at PAX East, Hideki Kamiya and Atsushi Inaba was asked about several things and they were very open about it. They talked about Wonderful 101's successful Kickstarter campaign that actually wasn't created for more funding, but rather it was to gauge fan interest. I'm sure not everybody is going to like that answer, but it does seem like it worked for Platinum Games as the Kickstarter smashed it out of the park, going well over 1 million on Kickstarter. Really, it seems like a special way to pre-order this game, though I will say I'm not sure I'm a big fan of Kickstarter being used in this type of way because it is a bit misleading. I think they should have been a little bit more upfront about it, but hey, that's just me. 
They also talked about the reason as to why Xbox was not included on this Kickstarter, and that is because it would be harder to port Wonderful 101 over to Xbox than on other platforms. That is because apparently the Xbox engine is quite a bit different than the engine they used for the original Wii U, and that it would be more expensive to port it to the Xbox because of that. That's really unfortunate though. I mean, if they were going to use Kickstarter, which is meant for funding, and they're saying the Xbox port is a cost problem, why not use some of that extra funding towards an Xbox port? I think a lot of Xbox fans would have chipped in to get a port, but hey, that's just my two cents. They did, however, seem to think that maybe it's possible in the future, but I wouldn't really put too much hope into that, but hey, one day you might see Wonderful 101 on Xbox. And I know a few of you worry about Bayonetta 3 as well, especially since Platinum Games has so many games in active development. But before they left, they did mention that we have nothing to worry about with Bayonetta 3, and that development is going very well. Now hopefully we get to see some gameplay of it soon, but for now we should be happy to hear there is nothing to worry about. In other news, we got to see that first person shooter game that Riot Games has been working on. Riot Games, of course, is most known for League of Legends, but they do seem to be branching out with other games and genres, including a card game, they have a fighting game coming up, and this first-person shooter codenamed Project A, which now has an official name, Valorant. Well, Riot Games did show a new trailer for Valorant this weekend, so we got a lot of new information. In this trailer, they were playing a search and destroy game mode, but from the sounds of things, it will have more game modes that they will reveal in the future. But I think as soon as you see Valorant, it's really easy to come to the conclusion that this game looks like a mix of Counter-Strike GO and Overwatch. Both of those are massively popular competitive multiplayer shooters, and of course, being developed by Riot Games, it is to be expected that Valorant will also be a massive player in the competitive multiplayer scene. Though yes, it did very much look like a mix of Counter-Strike with its weapon spread and gun mechanics, but it has those hero-like abilities that Overwatch emphasizes. Actually, speaking of hero abilities, it appears that each hero in Valorant will have four different abilities. Now, Overwatch has two abilities and an ultimate, so I'm not sure if any of these are ultimates. It doesn't look that way, but it does appear that they do have four abilities each. We don't know what each hero's abilities will be yet, but we got to see a few including your basic healing and some weird smoke-like screen wall. This wall can be shot through, but it could be used to reposition yourself as well as shoot unexpected victims. They do have some other abilities that you can see in this trailer. I mean, it actually looks really good. Honestly though, I think Valorant being a mix of Counter-Strike and Overwatch could make for a really unique experience and should offer enough differences that it won't feel like you're playing either one of those games and it has a ton of potential. Valorant will be a free to play game which was to be expected as Riot Games has had a ton of success with League of Legends being free to play as well and it will be releasing this summer so it's not like we're going to have to wait too long to play this game. I definitely do think that this is a game to watch out for and it has the potential to really explode on the scene when it does release. Now the last thing I want to talk about, and this is a weird one, but apparently Team Ninja's Dead or Alive 6 has added quite a controversial feature. So we have seen some pretty scummy microtransactions over the years, but this one seems to be taking microtransactions to a whole entire new level, as you can now change your hair in Dead or Alive 6, but at a cost. And what makes it so bad is that the color hair that you pay for will not remain unlocked if you decide to change your hair color once again. Now the cost isn't too high at only $1 each time you change your hair color, but this is actually one of the most absurd microtransactions that I've ever heard of. Changing your hair color for a price alone is already odd considering fighting games offer costume variants all the time for free, but you're not keeping them unlocked? I mean, that's just crazy. I'm usually not too against microtransactions at myself as I do know developers need to monetize their games, but even I thought this was really over the top. But let me know what you think about Team Ninja charging you to change your hair color and not keeping it unlocked. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Peace out.